Hey folks, welcome to this week's edition of Brush Pile Fishing. We've got a special show in store for you. Uh, earlier this spring, we were supposed to go to Texas and shoot with Tommy Ezell, but with travel restrictions and COVID and everything, we had to postpone. We still have some so-so restrictions, so Tommy and I have got a game plan. We are going to meet on this beautiful lake. It's called Lake Erling here in Arkansas. Neither one of us has fished it. Tommy's been out for a couple hours this morning. He's on the way to meet us here. Uh, so it's a lake we've never been to, but we've heard there's big crappie here. So Lake Erling, Arkansas, we're gonna give it a try. You stay tuned, we'll be right back with Brush Pile Fishing. Many people look at a lake and feel a sense of calm serenity. Crappie fishermen feel the heart pounding anticipation of the thump. That's why host Russ Bailey is addicted to crappie fishing. It's this addiction that takes Russ from the Midwest to the Deep South in search of the best lakes, techniques, and patterns from some of the best crappie anglers in the country, right here on Brush Pile Fishing. All right, folks, welcome back to Brush Pile Fishing. I'm right here with the Texas legend, Tommy Ezell. Tommy, how we doing, man? I'm good to see you. I'm glad y'all came down to go fishing. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to this. This is a type of show we've never done, man. It's like you've been on the, the lake an hour or so. We just got here, and uh, with the restrictions, like I told the folks in the opening, we're going to try a lake we've never tried, man. Absolutely. We're going to have fun and see what we can't catch here in Arkansas. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, folks, we left Ohio. It was five degrees. That wasn't a wind chill. That was actually five degrees. Now, it's warmer here, but it's still pretty chilly this morning. It's about 39 degrees. Yeah, it's getting hot, cold, hot, cold. So, you know, these fish don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, <laughs> but we're going to go get, we're going to go catch some fish. You think they'll hit them boneheads? I know they will. All right, Lake Erling, folks, here we go. He'll eat. Yes, sir. Folks, if you just joined us, Tommy's gonna show you this fish. We're at Lake Erling here in Arkansas. Tommy got here about an hour before we did. First time either of us has been on the lake. It is a cold, misty day, water temperature 46, but that'll get us going. We'll catch some bigger ones. Well, folks, we caught one in our first spot. We're going to another spot now. Uh, the one thing that I can tell you about Erling, there is cover everywhere. There's standing timber uh, visible anywhere you look, but then under the water too, it is just absolutely loaded with cover. Uh, and the fish are spread out right now. So we're gonna try to find some where the cover maybe is not so thick. Maybe we've got some fish grouped up, but this one thing, if you come here, you are not gonna have a problem finding cover to fish. Got him. Yeah, got him. got him coming out of there. Feels like a pretty decent fish. Not too shabby. It'll work. We'll catch some in here. There's another one right. A few of them down in that tree. See if we can do better. Get better. Got him. Ooh, that's got a little bend in it. Oh yeah. It's a better fish. There's a lake early slab. Folks, we're gonna change plans on this one. Look at that. Getting better, better and better. Good fish. Mm. Three inch. As far as the bait, Tommy's got a three inch slim stick on. Great big bait, single tail. And the thing about that I like, and, and you've heard me talk about this with dock shooting, is if the fish are a little bit finicky, even if you're not moving that bait, that tail will sit there and quiver by itself. And that's what all it takes to get some of these fish to strike. Hit the fish turned on it, the boat kept moving. And Tommy, for a guy just getting ready to get the live scoop, this is one of the toughest things, following those fish when they're moving. That's, boat, boat that control. takes some practice. Absolutely, yep. boat control is key. Um, you, you, I mean, if, if you can't keep the, the boat still and keep your, your signal on that fish, just it's it's worthless. It's a worthless worthless electronics unless you have boat control. Yep. 
And you know it's different if you pull on a brush pile and there's you know 20 fish in that pile, which you've seen a lot of live scope videos like that. Today is not the case. These fish are moving. Um, you can get a bait in front of them for a second. Either they're going to hit it or they're not, and they're going to move on. And it's like it's we talked about, thing. there's just so much cover. You're seeing one fish here, and they're definitely scattered. And you see me moving that bait, moving that bait. There's endless cover, so I mean, basically, they're in cover the whole time. They're just swimming through tons and tons of cover. To whereas in Texas, you'll have you'll have areas where there's a little flat, and there's some cover, you know, a tree, and there's another More flat. Isolated. Yeah, and they, and then they'll yep. stop. These fish aren't stopping. And that's the thing. Every fish you've caught this morning, you've chased down for several minutes, and it's almost like you've annoyed them into biting finally. And you don't want to hit that trolling motor because you can hear it. Oh, yeah. And when they're finicky anyways, you know the least thing. These transitional patterns, you got four seasons, and, you know, it can be tough during any transition from, from one season to another, but from winter to, to spring is by far the worst. You get these fronts coming in, the, the water will start to warm up, and then you get a front, and it'll cool it back off. And, and it'll really make those fish finicky. And you know, a lot of them have already fattened up. Um, that's what they've been doing all winter is fattening up. The average depth we've seen today so far, Tommy, has been anywhere from 16 to we're in 19 foot now, but 16's been about the normal. Mm -hmm. Got him. There we go. One single fish and he's got him. Bring him by there. It's a good fish. Getting better and better. That's two hogzillas back to back. These fish are moving. That's all there is to it. And when they're moving, you need to be pitching to them. Um, they're spooky. There's, you know, as you can see, there's not, there's barely a ripple, and they can hear that troll motor. They're getting better. Another dandy. Stay right there. More brush pile fishing action is next. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these outstanding sponsors. B&M Poles, the number one crappie pole company in the world. War Eagle, built for hunters who love to fish. Suzuki, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Slime Line, catch the fever. Bonehead Tackle, most durable crappie plastics in the industry. Mossback Fish Habitat, Cornfield Crappie Gear, quality products built in the USA. Hey folks, if you just joined us, we're on Lake Erling here in Arkansas. Uh, the, the premise of today's show, Tommy and, and I have never been here. We want to meet somewhere and try to put a show together. Tommy's live scoping. There's so much cover here. What we're finding is just one big fish and hardly anything else and they're moving. As soon as you drop down, a lot of those are moving quickly and you've got to chase them down. It's hard to do with the boat control using a live scope right now. So what we're going to do, I'm going to kind of just let you know what we're doing. Tommy's going to do the fish and I'm going to narrate. And uh, cause it, this is tough. This is the one negative uh, we've talked about on live scoping before is you've got to control that boat. And especially if you're not having schools of fish and you're chasing one that's roaming a lot like they are today, it's better if just one guy concentrates. And keep that in mind if you're in a tournament, sometimes the second guy is just gonna be the net man because when you're chasing down these roaming fish, boat control and putting that trolling motor where you need to be is critical. So that's what we're gonna do now, a little change of plans. Get another big one like that, Tommy. Let's see what happens right here. We have not seen a single school of crappie yet. It is one fish and they are moving. You know, when you got so much cover like this too, you see a, you want to go ahead and touch things, but a lot of these, these hard spots on these trees will look like, if they get, there's a hard spot on it and there's mm -hmm. a bump, it'll look just like a, like fish. a fish. But I'm going to tell you now, don't get disappointed. Um, always touch it, because you never know. There might be a big fish come off of it. Um, it may be a fish and it may be a tree, but you always look optimistically, and the optimistic point is you get to practice. You need, right. to, you need to touch that spot. There he goes. That's what you got to do. You got to touch, touch, touch. And especially, especially when they're finicky like they are and they're moving, um, don't worry about that fish you just missed. You know, just keep, on, keep going. The more you touch, the better, the better you're going to do for the day. Um, just go ahead and put them out of your mind because, you know, 
people are so worried about this live scope. And um, long story short, as you've seen it, it doesn't make them bite. It does give you the opportunity to put your bait in front of more fish though. Absolutely does that. There he is moving. Come on, baby. He's chasing it. He's gonna hit it. There he goes. He should already bit me. He yep. bit me. And there you got to see it, folks. Single fish. He followed the bait that time. Another good fish. Oh, gone are big fish in here. Whoa! He barely hit he barely he nipped. <laughs> He's on the deck. Another good one. It's fun. He's a little fatty. And you know, sometimes we complain about wind, but you like a little breeze to where you can keep that boat positioned straight into it. It makes it a whole lot easier. Absolutely, you do. You know, five to eight mile an hour is absolutely perfect, in my opinion, because you can keep that boat straight. <laughs> and I don't have to keep looking back there to see which way it's swinging, make sure it's not going to hit a tree. And of course, you can hear that trolling motor. I mean, I'm sure you can mm -hmm. hear it in the filming right now. And there's nothing you can do about it. That wind will also help cover cover some of the sound of, of your electronics and your boat, trolling motor. The key is getting your boat, boat position right. And then also, you definitely, look at that toad. You definitely do not want to um, hit that trolling motor. So, that's a big fish. Whew. God, if you hit, it's on. One's coming up. He, uh, he yeah. is aggressive, man. Yeah, he came up They're about two. They're starting to turn on. Yeah, he came up about two or three foot. A little one. Starting to turn on. A little one was fun to catch, too, though. Yeah, that's only a 13 half, 14 so, inch fish. So what's really cool about that is that'll show you right there. They are, th those bait, they'll hit three inch baits, guys. Um, I've been fishing those three inch baits for four or five years now, actually since Lake of the Pines, um, great tournament, that was 2015. And they're finally starting to turn on and, and people, are, people are really understanding those big baits are just great. Just eat them. What's really neat about the big baits is when you get on a, when you get on a bite, they're gonna they're gonna hit it harder. Um, those big baits make those fish hit harder because they want to wound. They it's a bigger bait, so they want to make sure it's wounded, so they hit it a lot harder. Brush pile fishing is brought to you by these fine sponsors: Crappie USA, Gill Fishing, I Hold Jigs, Blue Storm Life Jackets, Offshore Tackle, Power Pole, The American Crappie Trail. Driftmaster Rod Holders, Smooth Move Seats, Brush Pile Fishing Online Store, Grand Lake St. Mary's. People say, go fast, go fast, go fast. You know, I, I, in, in all honesty, I'm fishing around these guys in tournaments, this, that, and other. They ain't, they're, for the most part, they're not fishing fast. They're, and if they are, they're missing fish. Gotta go a little bit slower. Just seeing smaller fish now. Need a big one. But you never know. Those ones tucked down to the bottom like that. There he goes. There he goes. Damn. Could be good fish. Some He's pulling a little drag. Some of them don't. He ain't big. I was, I was spot on. He ate it though. I mean that that three inch bait is in the back of this fish's throat. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Little fish, big bait. There it comes, there it comes. I knew there was fish in there. I was gonna there. say, there ain't no way he's not hitting. I knew there was fish in there. <laughs> you know, that's it's just the top of some brush, you're not a big fish, so black crappie. Black crappie, but, um, first one. You know, you run across some brush like that, you wanna go ahead and, you wanna go ahead and just pull that jig across the top, because even though you don't see a fish, you never know what's gonna come out of the top of the brush pile. And somebody dropped a little brush there, back of his throat. I'm, I'm they're eating today. I knew he was going to hit because he chased that bad. No black crappie. I love catching black crappie. They, they, they fight, they'll hit that jig, and they'll head for the dam. You know what? What'll mess you up too is when you, you can, you'll see a fish, and then when you got to reposition the boat to get to that fish, 
it'll change that whole view because you're looking at that cover from a different angle. And there's a fish in there. There was. I think that's him right there. But it looks totally different from this side. I don't give them too long. You know, if I know that I'm touching that fish, there it goes. I love to do that. Go ahead and hit them before you leave. Make sure that you've touched them. Because if you do that, you know that your electronics are spot on. You know, you know you don't have any problems. It's all practice. Bam. There was two of them. He spooked the other one. Small fish. They're eating. See how big that fish looked mm -hmm. on this graph? When I got here and I put my trolling motor down and I started, the first fish I saw was about this size. And um, I say saw. It looked like a big old fish on my live scope. I don't know if it's the water clarity. I don't know what's going on with that, but that fish looked big on my live scope. It may be because I've been fishing winter, and you know. Tommy, what kind of limits do they have here? There's a 30 fish limit on this lake. Um, you can uh, chasing it all the way up. He's gonna hit it. Yep. Got it. Chasing it all the way up. Big bait. Look at there. Told you those were crappies. <laughs> they just don't want to bite today. He chased that baby a long way. 30 fish limit, and um, the way they're biting today, you're going to have trouble getting that limit. I can tell you that right now. 10 inch minimum. It's a good fish in this lake. Um, it's about as good as we've caught today, but there's much bigger fish in this lake. We've seen some real good ones. They're just finicky, awfully finicky. It's had a good day though. Yep, I'm gonna sneak in here while you ain't fishing. And now, the brush pile gear check. Tommy here with the brush pile gear check. What, I, what we used today was a sliding weight system. I call it an easy, easy slide weight system. This system will slide in case you get it, it hooked in some brush or some cover. We started off, we started off with one of my favorites and, and, and it's unfortunate it didn't work for us today, but the brush glider, tried and true, but unfortunately those fish were nipping. We had some finicky fish. What I do on finicky fish is I go to a big bait. Um, you put it in front of them, they're either gonna hammer it or they're not. We got lucky today and we had a, we had a few fish just really hammer this three inch bait. That's what we use today. Um, if you have any questions, you can find me at Tommy Ezil, Texas Pro Crappie Pro on Facebook, guys. Thank y'all. What's really neat about these live, live scope which I already knew be, from sweeping using down scan and side scan on my trolling motor before live scope, is you can specifically find, you can see that fish defined good. He, he came up a little bit, but you can, um, you know exactly what trees to look for. I basically call them houses and there's, there's crappie houses and there's specific styles of trees that those fish like. And if you see one and you get your live scope on it and you're looking around at that tree, don't, don't just run away if you don't see a fish on it. You need to hit all sides of that tree and you'll see, nine times out of 10, you'll see a fish in there because those specific types of trees, which you'll find using a live scope enough, you'll, you'll know which trees I'm talking about, they will always hold fish. Hard to see them sometimes, but they're always gonna hold fish. This is how those guys are catching them in this tournament. Mm -hmm. And they're chasing, chasing them down, you only, need, you only need seven fish, guys. Oh, got oh him. you got I him. got him. That was a roamer, man. I don't know how big he is. That was a roamer. I chased That's that fish. fish. He ain't even that big. Did you see the signal, though? Yeah. I chased that fish for how long? Yep. We'll take him. That's a good fish. That three-inch bait. Finally turned him around and caught him. Again, him just down. a solo fish, and he just stayed right with him the whole time. That's dandy. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Lake Erling, a lake that Tommy and I have never been to. It didn't work out quite like we planned. We thought we'd find some fish grouped up, but it was solo fish, solo fish. And uh, basically, I just watched Tommy. He is the live scope man chasing those down. And this is the first show. We've done some live scope shows, but never where we've had to chase those fish like today. 
So uh, again, folks, uh, you know, I didn't fish much at all, but uh, Tommy, I got to see you do this, and now I feel more confident about chasing those fish like we had to today. Well, I think, I think, uh, I think when you come back in October, you're gonna have a good time, and I can see where I'm gonna be getting my butt whooped for the simple <laughs> fact that in October we're gonna be shooting to these fish at least 30, 35 foot out, and I know he's the shooter, so. Well, like I say, uh, you know, folks, we wanted to bring you a show here, and when you caught that first big one, it's like, man, I'm just gonna put the rod down because we just, we couldn't find any where we had two, three big fish, and it was one fish, and they were moving constantly yeah. all day. And we talked a lot about the trolling motor control, but I don't think people really understand, Tommy, how many times you went completely from this way, had to turn it all the way around to chase a single fish. It's a lot of work It is. guy running that boat. It is, you gotta have boat control. So, you know, if you got this live scope and you're having problems, just learn boat control. Um, spend a lot of time out there on your trolling motor and you'll get, you'll get more efficient at it. All right. Hey, as always, thanks for joining us, man. I can't wait till October. Thank you, Russ. Oh, we're going to have some fun. Folks, Lake Erling here in Arkansas. I hope you enjoyed it. You stay tuned. We'll be back next week with Brush Pile Fishing.